you will be able to hear me this week, I promise. Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Willette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B, and it is a joy to worship with each of you this morning. As we get started, we have a few announcements today. First is that this afternoon, the United Methodist Women's Unit meeting will be at 2 o'clock. You are invited to wear a hat that is representative of the month you were born. So, if you were born in December, you are invited to wear a Santa hat. If you were born in November, you are invited to wear a stuffed turkey hat. <laughs> they will be taking up the birthday offering during this meeting. If you have any questions about the meeting, please see Margaret. On August 21st and 28th, we will be taking up a special offering for UNCOR to that will go to the Kentucky Disaster Relief. As we have seen, there has been significant flooding, and so we the conference and we as a church are participating in providing funds to UMCOR. UMCOR is the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and all 100% of proceeds that they receive go to the affected mission area. At the end of the month, the conference will be sending out information on where to take hygiene packets and cleaning kits to also assist with the cleanup of the flood. Next Wednesday night, August 24th, we will resume our Bible study in Heritage Hall at 6 o'clock. I hope that you will join us. I often say that on Sunday morning, you get to hear what I think about the text, and on Wednesday nights, I get to hear what you think. And so join us for an evening for evenings of discussion and study and growing in our faith together. This Saturday at 2 o'clock in Heritage Hall, we will be celebrating Baby Willette, who is just about seven weeks away from making his or her appearance, uh, hopefully. Uh, we, Ryan and I are registered for the baby at Target and on babylist.com. Our nursery is zoo themed, and we will know what the baby's gender when the baby arrives. And so we will be just as surprised as you all on that day. This week, August 16th through 19th, I will be at a clergy retreat in Nashville. I will be available by phone and email, and I will be in the office on Monday and Tuesday of this week. But if anything comes up, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My email is listed in the bulletin. Upper rooms are available for September, October. Upper rooms are available at both the front and the back of the sanctuary. Um, if you'd like to pick one of those up. And finally, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your queue so that we know you are worshiping with us today. Most importantly, I want you to know that whether this is your first time or you've been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. God of the ages, we sing your praises in the vineyards of our lives. In the garden of our love. Where we have become ragged and wild, prune us in the way we should grow. Nurture the soul of our Let your hand be upon us, leading us to Jesus, the perfecter of our faith. Bring us rain and drought, shade and scorching heat, and protection in the wilderness. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. <laughs>
morning comes to Hebrews chapter 11 and 12, verse 29 to verse 2. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. So when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because he had received the spies in peace. And when, and what more should I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut them out of the lion, Quest straight to fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength without the weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection, others were tortured, refusing to accept relief in order to obtain a better resurrection, others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in the skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not depart from us to be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that has been set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of of God. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Whenever I hear this text, whenever I read this text, the phrase, it's a marathon, not a sprint, often comes to mind. And when this text comes about, and I think of this phrase, I begin to reflect on the times that this had, this advice has been shared with me. Like when I took an extra semester to finish undergrad, I called it my victory lap. Or when I started seminary and saw the mountain of reading and papers ahead of me. It was shared with me by a mentor just weeks before I started full-time ministry three years ago. And it continues to be a reminder throughout my life and ministry. I've heard this piece of advice from family members and friends and mentors. Generally, the people telling me this are those who care deeply for me and for my well-being. They share this advice because they can see things from a different perspective than I can. Sometimes they can see better than I can when I'm running myself ragged, trying to do too many things at one time. They surround me with love and advice and care. Because they, too, know what it is like to be run right. I've also given this advice. And while sometimes I say the cliche with an ever so slight hint of sarcasm, the sentiment is always genuine. And yet this piece of advice is a hard piece of advice to take sometimes. I get into a rush, feeling like I have to do everything done and as perfectly as possible in as little time as possible. 
feeling like I have to accomplish more and prove that I am capable of what I am doing. Feeling like I have to prove myself in order to prove to God that I am capable, that I am doing my best to live into who God has called me to be. And then, in all of my frantic rushing, a text like this one appears in the lectionary. One that is not necessarily a light and bubbly text, though it does end on a positive note. Like our text from last week, we again have a long list of pillars of faith from the Old Testament. We recount Moses leading the Israelites across the Red Sea, the fall of Jericho, the protection of Rahab who hid Joshua's spies so that Jericho could fall. We recount the judges and kings sent by God who were deeply faithful and also deeply longer. Then we get to the brutal ways in which they were tortured and killed. And then we read that even though they were commended for their faith, they did not receive what was promised. I'm really glad the lectionary does not stop there. Instead, we do get left with hope in the last verses of the text. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that we cling so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the bodies. We see the people who were deeply faithful and deeply flawed. And yet they are still a part of our history as being chosen people of God. They are still part of the great cloud of witnesses who are with us on this journey, on our own journeys of being deeply faithful and deeply flawed. This text makes me think of the Wizard of Oz. After Dorothy is picked up by that Fateful tornado in Kansas lands in the wicked witch, lands in Munchkinland. Thank you. Apparently, I didn't put in my notes what it was called. Lands in Munchkinland on the wicked witch of the east, and meets Glinda the Good Witch. Dorothy and Toto set off down the yellow brick road on a quest to find the wizard in the Emerald City before the Wicked Witch of the West catches her to steal her ruby red slippers. As you know, along the way, she and Toto meet the Scarecrow in search of a brain, the Tin Man in search of a heart, and the Lion in search of courage. Together they face the challenges sent by the Wicked Witch of the West to stop Dorothy from getting to the wizard and to reclaim the ruby red slippers. Finally, reaching the wizard, they thought their journey had come to an end. However, as we know, before the wizard would grant their wishes, they had to prove their worthiness and bring him the wicked witches of After being captured, an incident with some water and the persistence of her friends, Dorothy retrieves the room and the clan heads back towards the, to the wizard. But once again, things don't go as smoothly as planned when they get back to the great wizard of Oz. 
Toto reveals that the great wizard is actually just a man behind a tree. The man then insists that he is a good man, just a bad wizard. And as a good man, he gives the gifts promised to each of them, though they weren't quite in the ways they expected. The scarecrow gets a diploma, the tin man gets a ticking heart-shaped watch, and the lion gets a medal for bravery. He then promises to take Dorothy back to their home state of Kansas via hot air balloon. And again, that doesn't go as planned. Toto sees a cat and jumps out of the balloon, causing Dorothy to jump out, causing the wizard in a hot air balloon to depart without them. As we know, she does make it home. When Glenda finally tells her about the magic of her ruby red slippers. <coughs> Throughout her trip, Dorothy had the faith that she would make it home. Through all the challenges that she faced, she stayed focused on doing whatever it took to find the wizard and make it back to Kansas. Finally, she could see her way home, and it, too, was taken from her. This wasn't because the wizard was cruel and determined to double cross her. He said it himself, that he is a very good man, just a bad wizard. It was simply the circumstances at the time changed. And Dorothy acted out of a willingness, of an unwillingness, to leave Toto behind. Our circumstances change constantly. We think we have it all figured out, and then our dog jumps out of the hot air with a wind. Or we don't get something that we have worked incredibly hard for. Or we lose an important person in our life. Or maybe it is revealed that though we may be a very good person, we are a very bad wizard. And yet, the journey we are on is part of the greater story of the ways in which God is working through God's chosen people. We are part of a continuation of a story that recognizes and honors people who have had deep faith, even if they were also flawed. We are part of the story as people of deep faith, also with maybe a few flaws. And yet when our circumstances change and we face hardship, we follow a God who does not abandon us. We follow a God who calls us to set aside every weight and sin that clings so closely so that we can be made perfect through Christ, who suffered and died so that he could enter into our own suffering and identify with us. Both in times that we are pushed to the margins and the time and the times when we are the ones pushing. Daniel Berrigan, an American Jesuit priest, anti-war activist, Christian pacifist, playwright, poet, and author, said, If faith does anything, as shown by the prophets and Jesus, it leads us into the injustice and suffering of the world. Our faith leads us into those places because Jesus calls us to enter those places and bring hope and life to those in need. Our faith leads us to those places because we know that in those places we find the loving children of God who were created in God's own image just as we are. 
our faith leads us into those places because we know that we do not enter them alone. Because we have a God who is always with us, no matter what. We may be flawed and perfect people, but we are also people of faith who continue the race that is set before us, setting aside every weight and sin that clings so closely. Through faith, we continue to be part of God's story that connects us through history to other flawed and perfect people who also have found their faith in God. Through faith, we continue to look towards Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Thanks be to God.
and we rejoice in another year of this ministry. Number 18. This is year number 18. Our school field program could legally vote in this year's election. <laughs> when will you all start back? It depends on when the guidance council gives numbers. It might be the 24th, it might be the 31st, it might be the 7th of September. We're waiting on the students. We are still a few weeks away, or we are still waiting for confirmation from the schools about when bagging will begin. We will be sure to communicate that information once we know when that will happen. Program in your yes. We will keep the fuel program in our prayers as they also get started on a new school year. We also pray for the children who will be receiving the bags and all of the hands that will prepare them so that they have food on the weekends when they are at home. Number 19. Seeing that, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, God who sent us Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this day, for the ability to gather together again worship your holy name. But God, we lift up to you all of the prayers in our heart. Prayers for students beginning their first full week of school. Prayers for teachers. Prayers for administrators. All who impacts these children every day. Oh God, we pray for those children who will receive the bags of food from this church. We pray that their bellies might be filled so that their minds are able to absorb information in the ways that you have designed them. God, we pray for our preschool as they begin back this week. We pray for the teachers and the children. We pray for the parents who are sending their child for the first time. So God, we know that you are always with us in times of change in times of hardship, in times of great and deep joy, you are with us. Oh God, we pray for our world, and our nation, that they might know your peace, your justice, your love. Oh God, we pray for our community and for this church that we might be beacons of your love and grace. Oh God, we also lift up to you the prayers deep within us. The ones beyond words the ones unready to be shared. For we know that you do indeed hear each and every one of them. So God, strengthen us to be your hands and feet in the world, that we might share your love and grace with all those we encounter. 
that is what you have called us to do. And now, as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us for those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, before we get to our closing hymn, we have a new member joining our ranks. And so I'm going to invite Doyle Clark up. We will be welcoming him here to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. He has been a member at Spring Hill United Methodist, not the one in Spring Hill, Tennessee, but the one closer by. And so we are excited to welcome him this morning. You'll be able to follow along with the liturgy on the slides. So will I ask you, as a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the, through the United Methodist Church? and do all in our power to strengthen his ministry. I will. As a member of this congregation at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christ's love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. That in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Welcome to St. Godwin United Methodist Church. Bill will be joining me in the back after our closing hymn this morning so that you all can come and greet him and welcome him to St. Bethlehem. And now I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together our closing hymn, We Walk by Faith, which is in the Faith We Sing, number 2196, and we'll be singing it to the tune of Amazing Grace. <laughs>
friends we have been called on this journey together, joining within so great the cloud of witnesses. We continue on this journey set before us by Christ, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And so go in peace, in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Thank you.